Iron deficiency chlorosis can be a bad problem in soybeans and other crops. Today we want to talk about, I'm going to call it the Band-Aid approaches, but then also what's the long-term true fix for IDC once and for all on your farm? We'll get to both of those today. When we talk about iron deficiency chlorosis, that leads you to believe I'm deficient or short in iron and now I'm going to see chlorosis or yellowing on my leaves. Well, half of that is right. You are going to see yellowing on leaves in most cases. The problem is not because you don't have any iron. We did a study, uh, boy, it's probably been 10 years at least now ago, where we took tissue tests on 600 different farms and we found that iron was not what was short. We had plenty of iron. The problem was the iron was in the wrong form. Once your soil pH gets over seven, that iron moves from the ferrous form to the ferric form. And the plant needs the ferrous form, which is a positive two charge. Unfortunately, now the iron is in a positive three charge and not available. Iron deficiency chlorosis can show up fairly early in the season, but it's something that can persist all throughout the season. So the whole key here is getting something done early on in the year or even before that. Well, here's where I want to start, Brian, because the number one question that I get when it comes to iron deficiency chlorosis is, what seed variety should I plant? I just need to switch seed varieties and my problems will go away. Guess what? There's no seed variety that's absolutely perfect when you're going to plant soybeans in those iron deficiency chlorosis spots. There's certainly going to be some that don't yellow up as much or yellow up for as long or recover quicker. That's great, but there aren't any that are completely resistant. So this summer I had farmers tell me, well, you know what? Those extend beans are the worst thing ever. I'm switching to enlist because the extend beans had iron deficiency chlorosis. And then I had other farmers say, well, the enlist beans are terrible. They get iron deficiency chlorosis. I guess I'm going to have to use Liberty or Roundup or Extend or whatever. No, it doesn't matter which trait platform you have. They all stink on iron deficiency chlorosis. Now, some are definitely better. And this is one of those, as Brian termed it earlier, band-aids that I would use is pick one that's a little bit better, but follow some of these other management practices to really help you. The other big band-aid approach is applying some iron. What you're looking for here is an iron chelate and apply that right at planting time. Use a good strong rate. What Brian's talking about here is an ortho ortho EDDHA chelate, something like soy green, for example, that you could put on at a pretty good rate in furrow. Now you could use these types of products foliar, but we see the most gain in terms of yield response and in terms of keeping that field green by putting it out in furrow. If you want to spray some iron foliar, you can absolutely green up your plants once they start to turn yellow. But the problem is we usually don't see big yield gains with that. In other words, if you just want the plant to look nice, fine, go spray that iron. If you're actually looking to make some money, that's a waste of money. The other Band-Aid brand that growers will try to use is planting population. If you put more plants out there, you are going to have a better response against iron deficiency chlorosis because you've got more roots, they're kicking out more organic acids, trying to solubilize nutrients, and in the process, they're acidifying the soil. Now, the other thing that could help too is compaction, because have you ever noticed that wheel tracks right through an iron deficiency chlorosis area stay green? Because they've forced out a lot of the bad things, the carbonates, the bicarbonates, and especially high levels of nitrates that we often find in these areas. So you can see a couple of those things that could help. I'm not saying compact your fields, but maybe you do want to plant a few more plants. All right. I'm tired of talking about band aid approaches. I've been talking about that for 30 years with farmers. Let's talk about how we actually fix the problem, like once and for all, and you're done with iron deficiency chlorosis for the rest of the years you farm. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, you absolutely absolutely can do it. What it amounts to is you've got to get the soil pH below 7. Once you do that, iron deficiency chlorosis, gone. Your iron stays in the ferrous form. That's what you do. So how do you get the pH down? Number one, you have to have fantastic drainage. Where we typically see the most problem with iron deficiency chlorosis is in cation exchange capacity levels of over 20. If your CEC is over 20, that tells us you have a real heavy soil. A lot of times you have quite a bit of magnesium. You have poor internal drainage. You need more tile lines, maybe even clear down to 20, 25, 30 foot spacings. My point is this, if you get that drainage good, now you can flush out of soil some of the things that are raising pH, like excess magnesium, like excess sodium. 
usually what we'll do after we get that drainage right is we'll tell you use some elemental sulfur. What you're looking for here is very, very fine particles of elemental sulfur and you get this applied let's say in the fall it's going to take a little bit of time to break down but when that sulfur converts over to sulfate you will have sulfuric acid formed the acid will lower the ph well when you get that ph down below seven again iron deficiency chlorosis goes away so what you're looking for with iron deficiency chlorosis out in fields if you're not familiar with it is you see yellow leaves that still have green veins if you've got iron deficiency chlorosis your ph is too high you can add more plant population, you can switch varieties, but you've got to get this fixed on your farm or it will cost you yield. Another thing that definitely costs yield is our weed of the week. Do you have this weed on your farm?